Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Today work is continuing on this uh, Gottlieb haunted house and today we're going to talk about ground mods, ground modifications to Gottlieb System 80 games. Um, I've got this game all working and now my uh, now I'm in the process of bulletproofing it and there's a bunch of recommended modifications to make this game more reliable and more fault tolerant and I'm going to go over the standard what they call ground modifications. Now this is a 1982 haunted house. It was um, made in uh, 1982. It's a Gottlieb System 80 or 80A which is very similar. There's another architecture sim System 80B which has some minor changes and I'll go over some of the differences but I'm mainly going to talk about the uh, the first incarnation of System 80s and uh, how you do the ground mods. Now if you have a System 80 game and there's a whole bunch of them it's highly, highly, highly recommended that you make these mods because they will cause all kinds of strange things in the machine. Weird reboots, coils locking up, all kinds of problems. Displays flickering, you name it. And the reason for this is because of the way Gottlieb had designed the ground system on these games. Um, obviously, they tied most of the ground lines together on the different circuit boards, but they did them through the edge connectors, and the edge connectors on this game are notoriously unreliable. So the recommendation is to tie some of the most of the grounds together into a common ground plane beyond the edge connectors to make the game much more reliable so there's multiple systems in here there's the the 5 volts for the logic which comes from 12 volts there's the uh, 45 volts for the coils and then there's other voltages in here too um, you want to the objective here is to tie all of the non-coil voltage grounds together. You don't want the coil ground to be tied to everything else. That way if there is a short in the high voltage line it doesn't send high voltage through the ground plane to more sensitive areas of the game. So basically we tie all the grounds together except for the solenoid voltage. And I'm going to show you how that's done. We're going to go one by one over all of the the major things that are done. So Let's, uh, let's first take a look at the back box. You'll find, if you've been following this series, I have all the boards all refurbished and working. Now you will see there's all these weird jumpers going from board to board. You see the green cables here with the, with the uh, spade lugs on them. These are all part of the ground modifications. So I'll just go uh, one by one through each of them. Um, Basically, every board in the system, except for the soundboard, and I don't know, maybe the soundboard, I haven't, I'm not sure, but I don't think there's one necessary for the soundboard, but there, there might be. I'll have to um, further read, but I'll go over everything I've got set up here. So, we have, on the upper left, this is the power supply board, and this is where I'm tying everything together on the ground plane. So you see all of the, the lugs, the green wires, there's one yellow wire, because I ran out of green, and um, let's look, let's take a look at this. So... We've got a lug here, we've got, a, we've got two lugs here, we've got two lugs here, we've got two lugs there. Um, so everything is tied to this bracket, and that's where we're using to bridge all of the grounds together. Um, so let's go over one by one what's connected to that ground plane. Now, first off, this is, a, this is the heat sink for the power supply, and um, it's painted, so you have to sand off that paint before you put these things on there. You can use this regular sandpaper. I've got a little Dremel with a stainless steel burnishing thing that I did. So even if it looks like it's not, it is. I actually burnished it, burnished the paint off underneath these things. So the first tie-in is at the top of this capacitor right here. There's one small green wire to the top part of this capacitor and that goes to the ground plane. So that takes care of the main power supply board. Now if we go over to the right, to the CPU board, the ground tie-in is at the top of this capacitor right here. This, the negative lead of the capacitor to the plane right here. Um, this is normally an axial capacitor. I've got, I replaced it with a radial, so sometimes you'll see a cap with a lead going out of either end, and it's going to be upper part. And of course, just note that it should be negative. And so that ties the logic and the uh, the ground for the CPU board into the plane. And then if we go over clockwise to the power driver board, 
we're tying in on this logic ground plane right here. Um, you can see I you basically burnish off a little bit of uh, the coating and you tie into this thick plane here between these resistors and these chips up here and then that just goes up into the ground plane. So that's the ground mod for this one and I'll show pictures on my website pinballhelp.com and uh, of course this is all, you can also find this on other, other sites too. And then let's go to the, there's two auxiliary boards in here. There is an auxiliary board here for the lighting and you can't see where the ground tie is on this one because it's on, oh actually you can. It's on the top side here. It's this little ground plane where the chips are. And again, I'll have a, I'll have a, a, a nicer pick of it. And you know, you take a little fiberglass pen and um, you know, clean it off so it's nice and clean. And then you just, this is an 18 gauge uh, wire that I've, I've done and I'm feed it, just feed, fed it through. And I put um, little spade terminals crimped on the other end and that's all tied in. And then let's go over here to the sound power supply board and uh, where this is tied in is it's coming from here to there this yellow wire and basically there's a big large uh, trace around that perimeter on the underside of the board it's, it's very easy to see that's the main ground you'll just scrape off a little part and solder to that and then tie that there so now you've got all, everything tied together now you need to tie that ground plane here to the back box ground plane and to the cabinet. So the, the the back box ground plane is right up here in the upper corner. This is what this is. It's just another wire. Let me see. Can you see that? You'll see a little wire right here. This attaches to this and there's a screw up here in the top that connects to the bracket assembly and you just screw that in here. Somebody also, there's also a fuse thing here going up to that too. So I just tied into the same line. So now you've got the head tied in, now what about the back box? You'll see that there's a green wire here that's running down into the back box. The top one end of that is connected right up there to the plane, to the, our back plane. The other one goes down into the cabinet. So where does it go in the cabinet? Let's show you. Close this. And we're going to lift up the play field. out of the way a little bit. Take the ball out. And lift. Up. Okay. I'll just keep this in here for right now. So, I may not have to lift the lower play field to show you where this is. So you'll see right down here next to the power supply. There's two big caps and then this is a metal ground plane right here and that's where we put a little bit more light down there so you can see it. So this is the ground plane and all the grounds are tied together soldered into this big copper strip right here. You see the light green wire that's the new ground plane so I ran that from there all the way up to the head and so now I've got everything all tied together. Now in system 80B games, instead of having this soldered ground plane, what they have is a series of Molex connectors that are all connected into part of the power supply. It's ironic that this is a much better, more reliable way because all the ground planes are just soldered in and tied together. And if something comes loose, you can cl clearly see where it is. Whereas in the system 80Bs, this connection of all the different grounds in the machine to the power supply are in Molex connectors and you can't tell if, uh, if, uh, if you got a bad connection on that and things will just start acting flaky. So the mod for that for the System 80Bs is to, there's a bunch of them, but one of the best ones is to pull the Molex connectors off and solder all the lines together and crimp them into you know, a big lug and then just put a couple of lugs together on the, on the, on the side of the power supply and then you've got it all tied together. So that's how you would do it with a System 80B. And uh, there's a few other minor little mods based on uh, what architecture you're using, but this covers this covers almost all of them. And uh, let's see, here we go. 
and there you have it. And so, shall we turn it on? Let's see if it's not going to blow up or anything. All right. And there we go. All those lights in the back box nice and crisp. Everything's working nicely. I find that with these ground mods, the lights just all just everything seems to be just a little bit brighter, a little bit snappier. Uh, you all, you know, it, it's nothing obvious, but it just seems like the game is a little bit more happy, you know, and uh, I like that. So there you have it. Our, this is now completely stock, and um, the next step will be to try out some alternative MPU boards. Oh, there it goes down. And I lost it. So, uh, that's where we're at. We have the game completely restored, playing really nice. I've even leveled it this time, and um, all LED'd out. Uh, a few other minor little things. I'm going to triple thick the back glass to protect that. And then uh, I will t we'll play around with a few other boards. So stay tuned for uh, a subsequent video where we talk about um, the different options. In fact, uh, yeah, I will do that in another video where I will show exactly what the difference is and what we're going to be doing. So until next time, be sure to subscribe YouTube slash PinballHelp.com or YouTube slash PinballHelp or visit PinballHelp.com. And I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram and all that. And so until next time, thanks for watching.